Hi, in this playlist we're going to be looking at the Edexcel November 2018 Paper 2 Higher Tier. And I'm going to aim to complete this whole paper in roughly about three or four videos, each lasting about 20, 25 minutes or so. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, compare your solutions. Should give you roughly about an hour's worth of fairly focused revision. Hope it's useful to you. If you're not sure about anything, always add a comment below. I'll always come back to you and I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, this is video three in the playlist where we're looking at the November 2018 higher tier paper two for Edexcel. As before, please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, compare your solutions. So in the previous video, we completed through to question number 12. So we're going to start with question number 13. OK, so question number 13, a um, little bit tricky, actually. It takes, it takes a little while to kind of work through, but it says, important. Importantly, there's an equilateral triangle. So it means basically all the sides of the triangle are the same. OK, so if we want to find out um, the length of the side, what we can do is we're told that the circle is a circumference of 44 centimetres. OK, so to work circumference out, we can say circumference equals pi d. Some people use 2 pi r, but I think in this circumstance it's probably better to use pi d. Okay, so let's have a look then at um, how we can use the information that we've got. We've got 44 is the circumference equals pi uh, times d. So therefore, if I divide both sides through by pi, it means that the diameter of this particular circle is 44 over pi. Now, you could feed that into a calculator if you want to, or you can leave it as a fraction. But basically, what we're saying now is we've got an equilateral triangle where each of the lengths of the sides are 44 over pi. OK, the other thing we know about an equilateral triangle is that each of the angles are 60 degrees. OK, because it's equilateral. All right. So we need to work out the area. Well, one of the formulas that uh, you will come across with, particularly the higher tier, is going to be that the area of a triangle is a half a b sine C. OK, so we can now use this information and plug it directly into the formula because we know that A is going to be one of these sides. It's an inclusive formula. So we just say, well, it's multiplied by 44 over pi, which is one side times 44 over pi, which is another side multiplied by the sine of 60 degrees. OK, it is a calculator paper. So if you pop that into your calculator, you're going to get an answer now of 84.94 centimeters squared and to three significant figures which it does ask you for is 84.9 centimeters squared and that's to three sig fig okay so a little bit of a tricky one to begin with but hopefully you guys kind of get some idea with it and hopefully that's all right for you OK, so let's move on then to question number 14. On the grid, sketch the curve with the equation of that. OK, well, what we've got to remember is that any number to the power of zero is going to be one. So basically two um, to the power of zero, if, um, if the value of... Um, of y is equal to 2 to the power of 0. So in other words, the, the x coordinate has not moved at all. That's going to give you 1. I've probably made a bit of a hash of explaining that, but hopefully you kind of know what I mean, that when the value of the x coordinate, this x coordinate is 0. Hopefully you can see that in the video. But this x coordinate is 0. Therefore, it's 2 to the power of 0, which is actually 1. So therefore, it crosses through at this point, 0, 1, OK? And because it's um, one of these types of... Uh, uh, the name has evaded me for the moment, but it's 
it'll come back to me later on it's gonna go like that exponential thank you it's an exponential graph okay so that's it it also doesn't cross the x-axis it's called an asymptote okay which you'll come across um, in some of the higher level uh, particularly if you do a level that sort of thing so a bit of a, a two marker throwaway type question but actually these sorts of questions are very very similar each time you see them okay let's move on then to question number 15 so question number 15 is going to be one that deals with again radius of a circle um, if you know the formula well actually the formula is x squared plus y squared equals r squared so this 42.25 is the value of r squared so therefore the radius must be the square root of 42.25 and that's going to give me exactly 13 over 2 which is 6.5 so a very quick throwaway question but you do need to know the formula for a, the equation of a circle okay let's move on then to question number 16 i think this paper is quite a tricky paper to be honest there's a lot of very wordy questions in it but you know we'll keep we'll keep pushing on and seeing what happens okay there's only red counters and blue counters in a bag okay um joe takes a random counter the probability of counter is red is 0.65 so let's just stop at that point because if that is the case then the probability that joe takes a blue counter is 0.35 so therefore on his sort of first pick if you like uh, or on the pick he's going to take probability of a red multiplied by the probability of a blue is going to be 0 0.65 multiplied by 0 0.35 which is going to give you 91 over 400 now again notice i've not really carried on reading too much more of the question um, happily joe puts his counter back into the bag so therefore the probability is going to be the same now for mary and she takes a random counter as well so let's have a look at what mary does okay so she has a choice of red or blue with the same probability okay which is going to give you 91 out of 400 okay so what is the probability that joe and mary take counters of different colors well you'll notice that i've used different colors here one red and one blue okay probability is going to be 91 over 400 same again with mary so therefore if i want to know the actual probability it's 91 over 400 uh, plus 91 over 400 do be very careful so when you're adding probabilities just be very careful imagine a probability tree if you want and you could actually draw a probability tree on this particular one again please do go back to the channel there are lots of uh, examples of these sorts of questions so that's going to give you 181 over sorry big one 182 over 400 okay and if you put that into a calculator or you did it by mental arithmetic that will reduced to 91 over 200 doesn't necessarily ask you to reduce i don't know whether you get any extra marks for it i doubt it unless it asks but you know it's worthwhile reducing providing you feel confident in your answer okay there are 78 red counters how many blue counters well if there's 78 red counters it means that red which is 78 is equal to 65 percent of the total of counters okay so let's put that into some sort of algebra type equation what we can say is then 78 is equal to 0 0.65 and t is basically of the total okay 0 0.65 is the decimal equivalent to 65 percent so if i divide through by 0 0.65 i get t equals 120 okay so that's the total amount of counters within the bag so therefore blue is going to be the difference between um 120 take away the red counters which is 78 and that's going to give you 42 counters so there are 42 blue counters in this particular bag 
Okay, that's eight minutes into the video. Hopefully you're, you're managing okay with this. Please do stop the video, take a bit of a break if you need to have a go at each of these questions. We're probably gonna do one more on this particular video because the next one's a bit of a doozy. It's a fun one, is this one, okay? You always know it's a fun one because there's a whole bunch of blank paper underneath and I'll do my best to try to work through it. Okay. So P and Q are two numbers such that P is greater than Q. Right, okay, well it doesn't start off particularly well, does it? So then it says, when you subtract from P, uh, five from P and subtract five from Q, the answers are in the ratio of five to one. So let's have a look at what happens at that particular point. Okay, so we're saying that P minus five in the ratio of Q minus five is going to be five to one. Okay, now what we can do is we can rewrite this and this is where I'm not sure whether you'll have come across this too often but we can write this actually as fractions. What we can say is p minus 5 over 5 equals q minus 5 over 1. Okay, I'm not sure whether you'll have come across that before but nevertheless it's one of the kind of uh, tools that you've got available to you if you've come across these sorts of questions. Now what I'm going to do also is I'm going to um, cross multiply. Now if I cross multiply it gives me the, the ability to get P equals something and that's going to be kind of important for me going forward because of the next bit of the particular question. Okay so if I cross multiply what I've got is going to be P minus 5 times 1 is still P minus 5 and that equals 5 times q minus 5. Okay, so let's have a look at what I can do with that. Well, I can now say if I expand those brackets, I'll just move this up here, I've got p minus 5 equals 5q minus 25. Okay, if I bring that minus 5 over to this side by adding it, what I end up with is a value of P, which is 5Q minus 20. Now, that's going to be important to me going forward. Okay, so my value of P is that. Okay, so let's have a look at what we could do next. Well, the next line says when you add 20 to P and add 20 to Q, the answer's in the ratio 5 to 2. Okay, well, maybe we can do a very similar exercise. I don't know. Let's have a look. Okay, so we've got P plus 20 equals Q plus 20. And again, we've been told the ratio of, oh, sorry, put that in the ratio of 5 to 2. Okay, so as I did before, I'm going to write that as a fraction. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that as p plus 20 over 5 equals q plus 20 over 2. Okay, and again, I'm going to cross multiply through. So if I cross multiply through, I get 2 times p plus 20 and 5 times q plus 20. And I can write that as 2 times p plus 20 equals to 5 times q plus 20. Okay, so where is this going to take us? Well, the whole idea with this is we're going to try to find a way to get values of p's and values of q's and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so let's have a look at expanding that out. So I'm going to get 2p plus 40 equals 5q plus uh, 100, yeah? Okay, now remember what I said before is that actually p here is this, it's 5q minus 20. So what it allow me to do is to put that into this value and have then the unknown across this whole equation as being uh, only q. In other words, I can drop the p part of it, okay? So what I can say is, all right, two, and rather than writing p, I'm gonna write 5q minus 20, plus 40 equals 5q plus 100. I did say to you this was going to be a bit of a, a bit of a nightmare, this particular one, but hopefully you're following me so far. I do appreciate this is quite a, quite a challenging question. There's always one in every, every exam, I'm afraid. Okay, so let's expand this out. I'm going to get 10q minus 40 plus 40 equals 5q plus 100. All right. Well, I can get rid of this minus 40 and plus 40 straight away. 
And then you'll notice I've got 10Q equals 5Q plus 100. So if I bring this 5Q over towards the left hand side by minusing it, I get 5Q and that equals 100. So therefore, at long last, I know the value of Q equals 20. Oh my gosh, so you might want to just stop the video and just work through this again. So just very, very briefly, I made it into a fraction. I cross multiplied. I got my value of P. OK, and then I said, all right, well, I'm going to do the same with this one. I cross multiplied and then I got this equation. OK, and that's fine. Hopefully lots of people will get to that particular point. But because I've got my value of P already, which is up here, I can then substitute it in. OK, and say, well, actually, rather than writing P, I can write 5Q minus 20, which means now I've only got one unknown to find, which is Q. And therefore, I can solve that equation to get the value of Q. OK, so we need to now work out the value of P. OK, so we've got Q and that's good. And then from there, I'm just going to put this into that P equals five times Q minus 20. So there's that equation again. OK, and I'm going to use it again. I'm going to say, well, that's that. fine. P equals five times 20 minus 20. Well, five times 20 is 100. Take away 20 is going to be 80. Therefore, P must equal 80. OK, and that actually is the answer to the question. Well, more or less. OK, I've got therefore the ratio of P to Q is going to be 80 to 20. OK, and in its simplest form, that would be four to one. And that would be the answer to this particular question. OK, I'm smiling here. This has been great fun. Not really. OK, <laughs> so uh, please do download the paper. And if you go to my website, Three Minute Maths, you'll be able to download this solution. I'll try to put it on the screen a little bit so at least you can see what I've been getting to. OK, I think that's 16 minutes in, but I think we deserve a well-deserved break on that particular one. I hope you found it useful. Don't worry too much about these really tough questions. Uh, there's plenty of other questions within the paper that I'm sure you'll be able to work through. OK, hope you found it useful. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video where we're going to start at question number 18.